Well, can I uh, wish you a, a, a very, very big welcome to the Buddhist Society from all over the world uh, to this very important series of talks. And we're incredibly grateful to have Ringu Tulku with us from Sikkim uh, to give them. Um, the Bodhicharya Vatara, or the Bodhisattva Way of Life, is really an important uh, text. One shouldn't think of whatever particular tradition one belongs to that is exclusive, because uh, this uh, text really teaches on wherever one comes from, whether one is Zen or Theravada, or Maha, one of the Mahayana schools, it really points directly to the very heart of the, the Buddhist practice. So it's very, very inclusive. And I was saying earlier, it's transparent, it's clear. And it tells you what, the, what really this, this practice is all about, where we're coming from and where we're going to. But our, our speaker today, Ringu Chuka, I'll read you a little bit out about him because this is for the record and will it be included in the recording we're making. So it's important that I, and you excuse me if I, if, I, if I read it out, I hope I don't embarrass you. But it, it, Ringu Tulku is a Tibetan Buddhist master of the Kaju order. He was trained in all schools of Tibetan Buddhism under many great masters, such as His Holiness um, the Kamapa, the 16th Gralya Kamapa, and His Holiness Dilgo Kense Rinpoche. He took his formal education at Namgyal Institute of Tibetology, Gangtok, and, and, and Sanskrit University in Varanasi. Um, Varanasi is Benares, for those of you who are not familiar with it, in India. And he's served as professor of Tibetology in Sikkim for 17 years. His doctoral thesis was on ecumenical movements in Tibet. And since 1990, he's been traveling and teaching Buddhism and meditation at more than 50 universities, institutes and Buddhist centers in Europe, the United States, Canada, Australia, and Asia. He's also participated in various interfaith dialogues. He's authored several books on Buddhism, as well as some children's books, both in Tibetan and European languages. He's, he founded the Bodhicharya, an international organization that coordinates the worldwide activities to preserve and transmit Buddhist teachings, to promote intercultural dialogues and educational and social projects. He's also founded Ring, the Ringel Trust, which supports his projects in his birthplace, Ringel in Tibet. And there is a, if you look on the, on the website, um, uh, the ringeltrust.org, uh, and you know the and donations because it's charitable organization and I know he gives a lot to charity and to help the poor in Tibet and so on. So please don't hold back if you can if you can be generous and it all goes to a very, very good cause. But just to go through the program a little bit, this is going to be 10 talks, and each talk will be on one chapter. So we start off with today, next week, and, um, and then there's a bit of a then there'll be two weekly finally finishing off with our last lesson 10, the dedication on Thursday, the 1st of July. Now, the, those of you who are really keen, you know, there is a book which, we, which is used, and that is um, The Way of the Bodhisattva by the Pamakara Translation Group, published by Shambhala and revised in 2008, and the commentary by Kunzang Pelden, The Nectar of Manjushri Speech, also translated by the by the Padmakara translation group and published by Shambhala. And um, I, we have a copy in our library and um, it, it's a good thing to, to get hold of this book. And so, you know, we can, we can do some further study. It just doesn't do it, just sit here and it goes straight in and out. We can actually do some reflection and, and, and work on it a bit. It's a very important for us to have such a wonderful teacher with us and not to lose this opportunity. It's really, really important, but I'm not going to go on talking. Talks will last about 45 minutes, and then there'll be plenty of time for questions. So you'll see at the bottom a little dialogue box. So use that, you know, when the questions come up, sensible questions. And um, Ringo Tulku has kindly said he will answer whatever questions there are. So he's giving us all the time we need 
to ask the questions we want to ask. So thank you very, very much indeed for coming and giving us these talks. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I would like to welcome everybody. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, I was uh, asked to uh, say something about the uh, this uh, very important classics, uh, the Bodhicaya Avatara, uh, in this in a series of uh, uh, talks, ten talks. Uh, I thought, uh, you know, uh, I would try to make a little bit, you know, uh, uh, kind of a gist of each uh, chapter uh, in one talk, uh, which is not easy at all. Uh, so I will try my best. Uh, I made a little bit of introduction uh, on my first talk at Buddhist Society a few weeks ago. And uh, now this uh, uh, text, I think most of you know, uh, is a very popular uh, text. Uh, it used to be very popular in India also, uh, because uh, uh, there seems to be many, many uh, commentaries on this uh, in Sanskrit. Uh, written at that time uh, by the uh, different masters, different Indian masters, especially from the great Buddhist universities. Uh, and then later on uh, in Tibet, uh, it became one of the most uh, studied and, uh, you know, the most uh, important uh, text to uh, to not only study but also practice uh, the, uh, especially the uh, bodhisattva's uh, way of life, uh, and and therefore you know uh, many many different masters have written uh, commentaries on this uh, in every school of Tibetan Buddhism. And by almost anybody, you know, who thinks of himself as somebody wrote a commentary on Bodhicaya Avatara. Uh, there are some lamas like uh, uh, the great uh, uh, master Patu uh, who used to teach this and this alone uh, to, as a public teaching. Uh, he used to teach from the beginning uh, and then go on every day a little bit and then come to the end. And next day he come, go back to the beginning and start to teach again. And uh, uh, there was some of his, his students, there is uh, one Kempo Kunpal, uh, who said that he received the teachings uh, more than 40 times, about 50 times. Uh, and uh, but he said that every time he received the teaching, uh, it was something, uh, something that he could learn more, something different, something important. Uh, and then at the end, he actually wrote a commentary uh, based on the teachings that he received from Patri Rinpoche, and that's this uh, Manjushri's. Uh, uh, the nectar of the Manjushri speech that has been translated uh, by uh, the Padmakara. Uh, this book was translated actually many times in English also. I think this is one of the uh, first uh, Buddhist uh, canon, the canon, not canon, but you know, literature uh, classics translated into English also. Uh, 
I saw one very, very long time ago. Uh, and then it is still being translated. And uh, uh, the, the latest is, as far as I know, uh, a translation by Kempo David uh, Chappelle, which I hope has come out now. Uh, also, I think, from uh, Shambhala, he has translated again and in a uh, very, very nice way. Uh, I've seen the manuscript. Uh, I don't know it, it, it is already out uh, in, in book form yet. Uh, but I also very much like the translation of uh, the Padmakara because it's very much based on the, uh, the commentary, the actors of Manjushri's speech, uh, and so very, very profound. Uh, now, uh, I also, you know, uh, studied this text many times, and uh, uh, I was very, very much benefited by this text. Uh, I really uh, found uh, a true practice of Buddhism uh, through this book. Uh, and uh, I've been also uh, trying my best to uh, teach this uh, in various parts of Europe uh, quite many times. And at the moment, I'm also doing uh, online teaching of Bodhicaya Vatara, uh, quite detailed, you know, each, uh, each time, you know, 20 minutes, uh, on one or two, uh, you know, stanzas and things like that, and we have come up to now, almost at the end of the eighth chapter. So, if anybody wants to go deeper into it, they can go through there. So, this time I'm going to make a summary of each of the uh, chapters and uh, uh, try to, you know, uh, try to talk about that, try to discuss that. Uh, it has 10 chapters, and uh, the first chapter, three chapters, is said to be, you know, how to generate bodhicitta. Uh, those who have not generated bodhicitta. And the next three chapters, that is 4, 5, 6, is how to maintain bodhicitta how to maintain this practice of bodhicitta. And then the next three chapters is how to increase the, develop the bodhicitta more. Uh, so that's nine chapters. And the last one is about dedication. Uh, so that makes 10 chapters. Now, Today we talk about the first chapter, and that is you know, basically the importance of bodhicitta and what is bodhicitta. Uh, I think uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't think uh, most of you need this introduction, but maybe there are some people who are uh, more at the beginner level. Uh, bodhicitta. Uh, is uh, basically, you know, uh, an intention. Uh, if somebody, you know, uh, it is usually described like that, uh, described as, uh, uh, you know, uh, two things. Uh, one is, that, you know, uh, there is a wisdom, wisdom part, and then the compassion part. Uh, the wisdom part is that uh, there is a possibility that actually we can, uh, we can find a way uh, to deal with all kind of uh, sufferings and pain and problems uh, of the uh, of the samsaric 
world. Uh, that we can actually transform ourselves. There is a possibility to transform ourselves. Uh, you know, the main thing of all these kind of, you know, uh, sometimes you call spiritual maybe, uh, or dharma um, practices, is that, you know, uh, it's an inner uh, development, inner strength to develop in a, in a development. Uh, that uh, through working on, on ourselves and, you know, uh, developing our own inner strength and understanding and wisdom, uh, we, can, uh, we can find uh, peace, happiness, joy, confidence, and, and whatever positive side uh, within ourselves. Not necessarily or totally dependent on outer things. That's the spiritual practice. That is the Dharma practice. That is the, you know, uh, what we call inner, inner practice. Uh, because most of people in the world think that our happiness, joy is dependent on outer things. Anyway, so, but, you know, the, uh, the, the Dharma practice is about that there is a possibility that we can do it from within ourselves, you know. Uh, we can bring peace, joy. Uh, so, so that's, you know, that is the, the wisdom part that, you know, uh, through understanding, through uh, experience, through meditation, through uh, different, you know, also uh, a certain kind of uh, uh, faith and devotion and, uh, and you know, all kind of uh, practices. You can call it, you know, from Buddhist point of view, uh, six parameters or whatever. Uh, that's the wisdom part. And, and now comes the next, which is very important here that there is a possibility to transform myself and fully transform myself. And that I, I, I should not just have it for myself alone. You know? uh, I like it to have that transformation for everybody. Uh, and that's the compassion part that, you know, I want to, I, because I see that I don't want suffering, I don't want pain, I don't want problems, I want a lasting kind of happiness and joy and, you know, all the positive things. But it is not enough that it is, if it is only for me alone, because everybody wants that and everybody wishes that. So therefore, I must do, I must try, I must work, I must, uh, uh, I must uh, 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 try to uh, find a way to bring that to everybody. Uh, and towards that end, I must, because of that, because of, for that purpose, I would also like to work on myself and bring that. So if somebody has that, these two things, the wisdom and compassion together, uh, then that person has generated bodhicitta. Uh, and so therefore this is regarded as a very important, you know, the most important uh, attitude uh, or motivation uh, because, you know, uh, what, from, from Buddhist point of view, what, what you do, you know, 
is one thing. Uh, if you do something, if you do something uh, positive, uh, it is not, you know, there, it can be for different reasons you do it. And therefore, you know, how, how much positive that deed is, uh, not only depends on what you did, but also and actually more on uh, for what reasons and with what intentions uh, you are doing this. Uh, you know, like uh, uh, there is a, I read a book once uh, a long time ago uh, called uh, How to Become Richer Quicker. Uh, in this book, uh, there are many, you know, uh, great uh, businessmen and, you know, uh, very rich people talking about how to become richer quicker. And one of the people said, you know, uh, if you want to become richer quicker, give more what people uh, want and give less what people don't want. Now, this is actually a Dharma practice, you know, uh, is what we try to give more what people want and give less what people don't want. But if it is for uh, the purpose of to become richer uh, yourself, uh, then you will become maybe a good businessman, but you are not necessarily a great Dharma practitioner or not necessarily Bodhisattva. But if you are doing this in order to really help people and, you know, really bring uh, benefit for the people, then yes, you are uh, doing, you know, uh, Dharma practice and, you know, you are maybe a Bodhisattva. So therefore, you know, there are different, the, the, the ad, you know, the intention and motivation uh, becomes extremely important. Uh, and so therefore, you know, Bodhicitta, Bodhicitta, Bodhicitta actually means, uh, you know, body, as you know, uh, is enlightenment, you can say, body. Uh, citta is heart, heart of enlightenment, uh, is, uh, you know, uh, this thing, the intention, the compassion, together with wisdom. Now, so therefore, you know, uh, the main thing is to try to uh, try to understand why and how it is so uh, so important to uh, to change our motivation, to develop this motivation, to you know, uh, and that is mainly the first chapter about you know. Uh, that it says that uh, usually, you know, in our life, what the, what uh, Santi Deva says is that uh, we do lots of uh, some positive things, but we do lots of negative things also, and we have uh, some positive attitudes, but also lots of negative attitude, and uh, if we have to like. Uh, you know, uh, balance our positive actions and negative actions uh, all the time, uh, maybe there will be no end to it. Actually, we cannot never totally get rid of all the negative actions because, uh, you know, we, we, it is something that we cannot totally do away with. Uh, but, but, if we have, you know, uh, if we have a generally or deeply uh, the bodhisattva's attitude, the bodhicitta, uh, then, you know, uh, anything that we do, if we do with that attitude, it becomes something very strong. 
and you know uh, even if we are not necessarily always pure and always positive and always good and always perfect but because this is what we we you know generally our attitude generally what we want that means that then you know uh, the negative side or negative actions or negative karma uh, can be very easily kind of uh, overpowered because of a you know uh, na- natural kind of uh, uh, background motivation generally what i want i want happiness to everybody uh, i want to get rid of all the problems and sufferings of everybody uh, even if i can't do much even if i make a little prayer uh, i just pray that the first time and first thing and then i say that may i be able to do something about it may i be able to contribute towards that and uh, even if it takes very long time and even if it is very difficult and uh, i will still uh, you know has to get it done because that's the most important thing because there is nothing more important than to free everybody irrespective of you know uh, which country you belong to which religion you belong to uh, which uh, type of life we have whether you are humans or not humans you know uh, everybody needs to be free from suffering and have lasting peace and happiness and that is the most important thing and i want that and i wish that and i'll do something about that if somebody really thinks like that as their kind of a, a true you know motivation then you have bodhicitta and that bodhicitta becomes the basis of uh, all the you know positive actions and um, so therefore you know it it can become the strongest uh, what can we say antidote to our negative actions uh, that's the the most first thing uh and therefore you know uh, because of that you know if i have that intention and with that uh, intention or the motivation if i work uh, then you know it will be good for me and it will be good for others you know uh, because uh, if that is the intention and that is the kind of my my main purpose and my main goal uh, then you know uh, what i want is something that is good for me and good for others and there is nothing negative in it and you know i i my my main aim is all good uh, there is nothing wrong side or or, or bad, bad, negative side uh, because i want the best for everybody i want the best for myself and i try to do whatever i can at this moment in order to get there in order to increase increase on that and uh, and when you have that that attitude and with that intention if you are living then you could be called a bodhisattva a bodhisattva is uh, uh you know the one little bit like uh, you know a knight of compassion uh, somebody you know uh, who has the heart for enlightenment who has uh, you know who strives to bring the, the enlightenment to everybody uh, who is sometimes called as uh, the uh, the heirs of the buddha uh, the buddha to be 
you know. Uh, once you have that bodhicitta, then, you know, sooner or later, you have to become enlightened. You will become enlightened. Uh, so therefore, you know, you are like, uh, uh, almost like a crown prince uh, to the Buddha, the Buddha to be. Uh, so therefore, you know, uh, it is like, uh, you know, uh, as soon as that attitude, that bodhicitta arises in you, and for a thinking person, it is not so difficult to understand because there's nothing better than that, the motivation, what you want, what your, you know, uh, what is it that you want, you know. Uh, sometimes, uh, when I was in the, uh, when I was a child, you know, uh, I was in this young Lama's home school, and we used to go and meet lots of great people from the president of India to all the ministers and uh, ambassadors and things like that. And many people used to come and visit um, where I used to study. And everybody used to ask me, you know, what do you want to become when you become, uh, when, when you are older? And uh, I never knew what to say, actually, because I didn't know what I wanted to become. But uh, later on, I found that people say I want to become, uh, you know, uh, engineer or a doctor or, you know, uh, all kind of uh, different things. Uh, and I was thinking about this. And uh, is, it, is it that? Is, it that? is that our main aim, to become an engineer or a doctor or uh, whatever, politician or, you know, a professor or whatever. I think the main reason why we think like that is, you know, we think that if I become that, that will solve my problems. That will become, make, bring me happiness and joy and, you know, like, you know, solve all my problems. But that doesn't solve your problems by becoming a doctor or uh, whatever, you know. Uh, what actually you want is actually you want to be free from all kind of problems and sufferings and pain, and that's what you want, you know. You want lasting peace and happiness, and maybe not just for yourself, but for others also, you know. Uh, and there, you know, then we need to think more and understand more. You know, usually we say, I want this to myself. I want this myself and my people, my loved ones. But my loved one has their loved ones and things like that. And then, you know, the one that I don't love now will become, if I meet somebody new, I could love them also. So therefore, you know, there is no reason why I have to, you know, put people outside that because everybody wants that anyway. So therefore, why not extend this wish to everybody? Because if I do that, then I don't have to hate anybody. I don't have to have negative wishes anybody, and I wish that good thing. And that is the enlightened, you know, compassion. That is the best way of, you know, uh, what can we say? That the best motivation. There is no better than that. And this, uh, when you have this uh, motivation, then you become a bodhisattva, and you become actually worthy of respect by everybody because you are, you know, your motivation. Even if you are not that uh, that great bodhisattva, it is not to say that you immediately become a great bodhisattva that you you do miracles to help everybody and you you know you have no problem and you have no negative side and you have no negative emotions and you never do anything wrong it's not like that but you at least have that motivation and when when you that then it's like you know you have transformed 
your attitude, your way of thinking, your, you know, your goal. You, know. uh, you have a very uh, big purpose. You have a very uh, important goal, you know, uh, and a very positive goal. Uh, so therefore, you know that it is not easy. Uh, it's not something that you can attain in a very short time, maybe in a few lifetimes, but it's the most important thing because to, to be able to, you know, to wish well and to not just wish well, but wishing to bring the best to everybody, there's nothing better than that. So therefore, you know, uh, we need to, if we can bring that attitude and that, uh, you know, way of uh, thinking, in our mind, uh, then uh, that's the most precious thing, a very precious motivation. Uh, and so therefore, uh, he's saying that try to develop that attitude because that's the, the most beneficial attitude ever. Uh, and most rare also, because most of the people have never ever thought about that, you know. Everybody wanted to be free from problems themselves, and everybody wanted some good for others also, but, you know, nobody could be so big-hearted. Uh, and so, you know, it is very difficult for people even to imagine uh, that kind of uh, uh, broad-minded and, uh, you know, with that kind of... Uh, 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 so therefore, you know, just to have that attitude is the most important and uh, most, what can you say, positive uh, thing that you can generate in yourself. And for that, you need to think, you need to, you know, you need to uh, observe and see, you know, uh, how much you don't want suffering, how much you don't want uh, pain and problem and difficulties, and uh, how much you don't want your people, your loved ones, to, to have problems, difficulties, suffering, and how much everybody is actually trying hard to get there, you know, and then, but they are not able to because they don't know how to. So therefore, you know, it has become so important that we, we, we have to try to do that, but not only, you know, and learn how to, how to bring that happen. Uh, so therefore, once we have that attitude, then whatever we do, becomes uh, something positive because we will try it for a, a positive, you know, uh, attitude, with a great positive attitude. Mm. And so therefore, with that, even if, you know, we have already done some negative things or anything, you know, in our actions, sometimes we get angry, we get upset, we do, you know, things which are not so... But if we can maintain this, you know, basic motivation, uh, this can easily, you know, purify them more easily. Uh, therefore, you know, it's a little bit like, you know, a very strong fire, then it can, you know, it can burn anything and everything. So in the same way, uh, it's the, that bodhicitta or, uh, you know, that kind of attitude becomes the strongest, you know, uh, strongest antidote to purify negative things. You know, that's why we sometimes say that, you know, uh, compassion is very important. Because if you look you know, compassion is the opposite of almost all negative emotions. Uh, if you get angry, hateful, 
The opposite is compassion. If you are too much like uh, greedy or you know too much attached, the opposite is compassion. Jealousy, too much jealousy, envy, opposite is compassion. You know, and too much like arrogance and you know uh, self-centeredness, the opposite is uh, compassion. So almost almost all negative emotions and actions is compassion is the antidote. So therefore, you know, bodhicitta is basically uh, you know compassion unkind of uh, unbounded or you know uh, compassion. Uh, now this uh, bodhicitta uh, is described as two. One is what we call as the uh, aspiration bodhicitta and another is uh, action bodhicitta. Uh, aspiration bodhicitta is just wishing, you know, I wish this, I want this, you know, I want, I wish that everybody be free from suffering. I wish that everybody becomes, you know, uh, have the lasting peace and happiness. And uh, I, wish, I wish that, you know, that is the aspiration. Uh, and then the action bodhicitta is, in order to make this happen, I do something. You know, uh, so it's like said that wishing to go somewhere or intending to go somewhere and actually taking the first step. These are two different things. You know. uh, if I intend to visit somewhere or you know travel somewhere, and thinking about that, wanting to do that is the aspiration bodhicitta. Like I really want to help, I really want to bring happiness to all the people. I want to do something that is good for me and others. That's aspiration bodhicitta, which is very very good. Which is what we have to start with. But when we actually do something, whether it's to train ourselves in this or actually take some actions about that, that's the action bodhicitta, you know. Uh, now this, the action bodhicitta is very, very important because, you know, just thinking about it uh, is good. The motivation is very good, but you know, uh, it's just a motivation, it's just a thinking, it's just an aspiration. And then when that aspiration becomes very strong, you know, and very, very clear and very, you know, uh, very tangible, then it becomes action. And then, uh, you know, that's the action bodhicitta. And uh, it is said that once you have that action bodhicitta, then, you know, generally whatever you do becomes positive because it is, you know, you, you, are, you are doing that, you know, like even if you are sleeping or you are uh, temporarily kind of uh, unmindful, uh, you are actually uh, practicing bodhicitta. You are actually a bodhisattva because that's your livelihood or that's your living way. That's your life, you know. Like if somebody is, uh, you know, is something, you know, and he is at the moment, you know, he's on a mission and then that person is at the, at the moment resting or sleeping or eating. But even then he is in the, you know, mission. He is on the mission. Uh, so in the same way, if you are, you know, uh, training on that, that is, you know, uh, so because this is, you know, this why it is so 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 great. Because you know, if you, you know, people, if if uh, some people think that I want to get rid of people's headaches, that is also regarded as something very good. Or if you just give some food uh, to some people. Uh, 
uh, or you know some medicine or some clothes and, uh, then it is considered very good but here it's not just that you know we want to give them lasting peace and happiness to free them from all kind of suffering and pain so therefore you know it's so positive action and positive you know uh, it's uh, something like uh, uh, unimaginable so therefore you know uh, it is uh, something that uh, uh, that we should understand this and try to generate that bodhicitta and uh, once we have that bodhicitta uh, then you know uh, we can actually become uh, a true dharma practitioner uh, and and we should also understand that everybody wants to have happiness and joy and everything for every for themselves there's nobody who doesn't want that but they don't get there because they don't know how to you know so therefore you know uh, therefore it is so important to uh, to try to you know really uh, work and learn uh, how to bring this you know lasting peace and happiness so therefore transform myself Uh, in order to transform myself with that intention is also the uh, most important thing you know that's uh, because you know sometimes people think that you know uh, you say that you want uh, you want you 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 are developing compassion you try to uh, you know have good wishes to everybody but actually you don't do anything physically Uh, you are meditating or you are working on yourself and things like that but that depends on your intention if your intention is truly to develop your strength and your capacity to to help others then it is actual actually same as action uh, because you know if somebody wants to cure diseases then he has to go to the hospital you know the medical school and learn for many years uh, if he doesn't do that and immediately go and you know uh, try to give medicines it might be more harmful than helpful you know so therefore uh, working on yourself uh, with that intention uh, so therefore you know uh, this is the understanding uh, so therefore you know uh i think i have taken uh, more time than i should have uh, i think i should try to because i can't go through the whole thing because you know uh, it's a big long book but uh, uh, you know the, that's the bodhicitta and the main thing about the bodhicitta is that to understand that i think is the important thing and once you understand and then you know why you should generate that and why it is the you know it's it's the best thing that you could do is to work with that intention uh, and then work on yourself work on others and train you know uh, because we need to train we need to learn uh, and then the training is the method of training is six parameters and that will slowly come Uh, so i think i will stop here uh, although it's a little bit inconclusive but uh, i think this <laughs> uh, it's okay uh, i think most of you are very familiar with these subjects and things like that uh, and uh, of course you can read the books and there are you know lots of books on these things nowadays uh, and good books also uh, so i'll stop and if you have questions then uh i try to discuss thank you very very much for a wonderful inspiring talk there is, there is a question from somebody here and he says um I, i i love your talk thank you very much he said i find it very inspiring but if i'm honest i just only really care about myself and i when i think about doing good for other people i feel like a complete hypocrite and i don't think i can think about helping other people but 
when I think about bodhicitta, I think I'm being hypocritical. So I feel I'm not doing it in good faith because most of my thoughts are about me. Is there any cure for this? Uh, I think it is okay, you know, in a way. Uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, it's nobody is saying that you should not care for yourself. I think you should care for yourself. and You should do whatever you can to, you know, to, uh, to benefit yourself and to work for your benefit. Uh, but, you know, uh, if you do things uh, in order to help yourself, if you are harming others, and, uh, you know, if you have uh, hatred for others, if you have, you know, negative feelings for others, and you are angry and uh, you have, you know, uh, negative emotions towards others, you need to understand that that's not helping yourself. Yeah. This is the main important thing, I think, that, you know, having uh, negative feelings or only me, 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 I want good, I want, uh, is not really helping myself too much because, you know, uh, I want, I want good things. I don't want bad things. Uh, I want this, I want that. If you, only that attitude, then, you know, because, you know, somebody, some, many people think that, you know, I want to be happy, I want to be happy is going to make me happy, but actually, it's going to make you unhappy. How? Because I say, I want to be happy, I want to be happy means I'm not happy. You know, I'm not happy because if I, wa I, wa I was happy, then I wouldn't say I want to be happy. Uh, and then I run after happiness, and then, you know, everything makes me unhappy because I never, that happiness is not coming from wanting happiness for myself, but learning how to be happy. Uh, so therefore, it's a little bit like, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, only wanting good things for yourself uh, is actually is the, the main problem, because then you have attachment and aversion, and there is always something you are attached to and something you have aversion, and then, you know, you have the fear of losing that what you want, you have a fear of getting what you don't want, and then you are working, trying to do that, but it never finishes, but happens. And so you try, that's what we have been doing all along, life after life after life, and we never got totally. So therefore, if, you, if we can, this is the main understanding, that if we can a little bit, you know, say, okay, what I am, is not maybe the best, but it's okay. Now I start to think about others. I start to look and see, you know, what others have and what problems the others are going through. And if I see that there are so many problems that people are going through and there are so many difficulties and so many, and if I st start to observe that, I think I become a little bit more aware that actually how lucky I am, how fortunate I am, and you know, the situation that I'm in is so much better, and so I try to, I, I start to appreciate the things that I have, and, uh, and then see the problems of others. So therefore, you know, I, I would like to do something that might help some people because I am already much better than most of them. When I have that understanding attitude, and, and slowly, you know, a little bit, 
you don't forget, but you are not so much only focused on your own things, you know, happiness and unhappiness, but you can a little bit relax, you know, uh, in yourself. And that brings, I think, more peace and more contentment. And therefore, you know, even if things doesn't change outside, you feel, you know, better about yourself. You are not so disparately running after happiness for yourself. Uh, and therefore, you know, sometimes it is said, and I think it's very important, that helping somebody, and, you know, really with the good intention of, is actually helping yourself more than others. Because, you know, when you do something that you feel is helping somebody, you feel so much uh, purposeful, you know, <clears throat> that I've done something good, that I've done something useful, I've done something, you know, uh, something worthwhile. You know. Uh, there is a, I heard that there is a research paper uh, from Howard, uh, I think, law school, uh, that they said that, you know, people spending their money uh, on others uh, brings more happiness than spending it on ourselves. And I thought about this, and then I thought, you know, uh, if I had uh, five dollar, uh, pounds, and then I went out there, and I saw an ice cream parlor, and I said, well, I like ice cream. I would like to have an ice cream, and I went and had an ice cream. I would enjoy it very much. But when I return, then I would probably think that I'm already too fat, you know, and uh, I should not have too much ice cream. And maybe it was not so good for me. And, you know, after all, you know, after I've eaten that, then I don't feel that good after all. But if I had gone and given that five pounds to somebody that, you know, really needed uh, maybe in the beginning I would not like it too much. Uh, but then if i done it, then I would think, yeah, I have done something extraordinary today because I usually don't do that. And then, you know, then in the evening I would think, oh, today I really did something that would, you know, would be good, something that helped somebody. Uh, and tomorrow also I feel better because, you know, yesterday, I, you know, if I had ice cream, nothing happened, actually, not even good for my health. But, you know, even next year I could feel good because last year when I was here, I gave somebody five pounds. So that kind of, uh, that thing can bring, you know, uh, remain in me for a long, long time, you know. Uh, so therefore, you know, giving that five pounds to someone gives me much more joy and much more purpose and much more, you know, much more kind of, uh, what can you say, uh, meaning uh, to my life than if I had taken an, an ice cream. So it's like that, I think. There's a, there's a question here, which I'm sure many people can understand, is that um, in order to cultivate bodhicitta, if you're very angry, it can be difficult. And there's a question here, is, which is how do I, uh, how do I develop compassion for people who've hurt me in the past? You know, I think that is, uh, that's very important because, you know, uh, usually, you know, when some, somebody hurt you or somebody does something, uh, or, you know, uh, does not do something, and then you feel very hurt. Uh, and then you think that, you know, uh, I cannot forgive that person, I cannot do, wish well to that person because, you know, I was very hurt. But I think we have to think this way, then, you know. Uh, is it good for me to hold on to that hurt feeling? or not to hold on to that feeling, you know? 
maybe that person intentionally or you know with really yeah. bad motivation try to hurt you maybe not that much but you know it happened because he was doing or she was doing or not doing something then you got hurt but the most important thing is that you don't need to you should not keep on hurting so if i should not keep on hurting and that becomes my main thing then i should tell myself very strongly but whatever that person did or did not do you know i should not i should not give that much attention to that i should learn to 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 free myself from this feeling of hurt so therefore you know i should let let go this feeling of hurt and the best way of doing that is to you know okay whatever they happened happened you know because lots of things happen uh, intentionally unintentionally you know and uh, so if i you know if i hold on to everything in a negative way uh, there is no end to my own suffering so for my own good i should say let it be you know uh, i don't need to hate that person i don't need to you know hold on to that feeling of hurt i don't need to i don't need to love too much that person or respect that person too much but i don't need to you know i need to hurt and then most of the time those people who do negative things are themselves in problem you know themselves suffering and themselves have lots of out of ignorance out of uh, because they are under the control of their own negative emotions or different situations they do things and you know uh, if you really go deeply into the way th- their life is uh you will find that actually you know uh there is nothing to hate them for and so therefore you know why not wish them well and let go of my own you know uh hurt feeling uh, so this is i think important that i should let go of my own hurt feeling uh, because that's the best for me and if i can do that i can also forget and a little bit you know forgive them when you say forgive i think it's very important to understand that when you forgive somebody it's not saying that what they, they did was good or right or you know uh, it is just saying that i don't accept what they did and i don't want to hold on to that myself i let that pass on Okay yes and I think there's a very quick question here and that is does evil exist yes does evil exist is it real well you know there are lots of negative things negative emotions negative actions yes there are lots of negative things uh but there are also lots of uh, positive things and uh, this negative thing or whatever you call it is not only out there but it's inside us you know mainly it is inside us uh, and uh, if you give in to that negative feeling and you know too much uh, self centeredness too much negative emotions then uh, we are you know controlled by that and lots of people are controlled by that Uh, so this is the main main practice that we uh, should try to not be controlled by the negative things but you know uh, we should try to uh, let go and overcome these negative things and then it can be you know there's nothing called evil one thing out there completely only evil you know it is uh, this positive negative all the time and the negative side is also very strong there's another one here which is a good question and that's um thank you so much for your talk 
So how should one help others in a way that doesn't bring harm when one is oneself mentally weak or spiritually undeveloped? Well, I mean, uh, we can just try, you know. Uh, every time we try to help, it is not necessary that it will help them. Uh, you know, it depends. Whatever we do, it you know whether how much it helps or it depends on many issues. You know, it's many elements. It's not just you uh, who are doing it, but many things. You know, if the person you are helping, if he or she cannot accept that help, uh, it wouldn't help. You know, how much help that person gets also depend on many situations. So therefore, you know, you never know how much you can help or not help or even, you know, uh, would become less than help, you know, that you cannot say. Uh, but what we have to do is try, you know, uh, first, of course, think uh, to our best of our uh, wisdom and understanding. Uh, what I'm trying to do is with good intention, with proper positive intention or not, because sometimes, you know, if you look deeply what we are trying to, what we thought is trying to help, but if you look deeply, it's not that intention, but something else also sometimes. So therefore, you know, I have to watch my uh, motivation and then I have to try my best to, you know, to find the best way possible. And then I take some actions and if it helps, very good. If it doesn't help also, very good because I did with best my ability. I think that should be the way, you know, it's not that if I'm not all kind of capable and all, uh, you know, great and, you know, wonderful, I cannot do anything. I think that's not really uh, the case. Another question here, and I assume the person is concerned. Anyway, this is the question. How about doing good for others with the goal of creating good karma for oneself? Well, uh, uh, that is also there, and I think it is, um, you know, it's not the best intention. Uh, it's not the best intention, and so therefore it's not recommended as the, the most kind of a bodhisattva type of uh, intention. But, you know, I think that's also okay, you know, uh, if you really want to help, and if you want really to do something good, uh, then, you know, you know that it will bring some some good result for yourself and maybe some good for others. So uh, I think there is nothing too bad about that. Um, yes, this is this is an interesting question. For the time, many people are restricted in their external activities at the moment. Please advise on techniques we can employ now to generate bodhicitta and feel we are doing something helpful even though it may not be practical, in order to increase our faith in the practice. Thank you. You know, I think uh, uh, any situation, you know, have uh, mostly a positive side and negative side. Uh, so I think it is important that we should try to uh, not only focus on the negative side, but also on the some positive side, you know. Uh, we are restricted in traveling and we are restricted in doing lots of things. Uh, and that is not so nice, you know, because it's not what we are used to and we are not free to do lots of things. Um, not because somebody is imposing on it, but because, you know, we don't want to get ill and, you know, we don't, don't want to get uh, get problem uh, so uh, but being in you know being restricted also has uh, some opportunities you know uh, that we can we can do lots of things 
by just being inside and doing, you know, not going outside. Uh, we can read books, we can learn, uh, we can meditate, uh, we can, you know, we can improve ourselves, we can, uh, you know, uh, I think instead of, this is the, I think, important thing, instead of feeling bad about what we don't have and what we can't do, uh, try to find something that we can do uh, which will be useful and meaningful in this situation would be the important thing, I think. A question. He says, I know patience is one of the parameters to be covered in future sessions. However, could you please speak to it in reference to the start of cultivating bodhicitta, especially in noticing more and more how deeply established habitual negative thinking may be, and without being severe and ending up self-cherishing self in that respect. Uh, I don't know if I understood the whole question very well. Uh, but, you know, uh, patience, you know, uh, patience is also, I think, uh, understanding, you know. Uh, it's not just kind of or oh, enduring, you know, this is bad, 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 but I have to you know, be patient. It's not just that. I think I have to uh, understand that, you know, uh, there, there are always things that happen that you, you don't want. Uh, there's some things that is not so easy, uh, some things that, you know, uh, but then, you know, uh, you have to you have to learn to, you know, to understand and uh, uh, experience and balance these things, you know. Uh, if somebody is, uh, you know, if something happening that you, uh, you don't feel good about, you know, like, say like you are restricted to travel, or somebody is doing something or saying something, uh, that would you did you don't like, and you you know you you are bothered. Uh, one way is you are angry, and unhappy, and hurt. Another is you know, uh, you say you know this. There are lots of negative things, and there are lots of negative, uh, pos you know, things like that. But you know. Uh, how I am affected by these things is not just what others are doing or situations are happening, but how I react to that. You know, uh, if somebody is saying something not so nice, you can be very upset and angry. If you are, you know, restricted and you don't get things what you want, you can be upset and things like that. But you know, if you get upset and you get angry and if you get feel bad, that is only hurting yourself and it's not going to, you know, uh, make anything good for you. So when you understand this, then you, you, you say that, okay, this is something which I don't like and this is not, but you know, uh, it's okay, you know, it's okay, I need to uh, I need to look at it in a slightly different way because what the most important is I don't want to make myself miserable. And so therefore, uh, what can I do to make myself not miserable? Uh, I just let things happen and don't give too much attention to that. Uh, let things go from here and here. And if I can do that, if, if I can do that one time, that even if somebody did something not so nice, or if something happened that was not, and then I could, I could somehow uh, find a way that it doesn't hurt me, I think then I will feel very good about myself. And I think, I, see, I feel that, okay, I can deal with it now, you know, it is so great, you know, I've learned something. 
And if I learn how to deal with negative things without getting hurt and, you know, uh, then that's the most important learning, you know, because then I can do that anytime and, you know, I can be unaffected by. So, you know, that's patience, I think. Then you learn how to, you know, deal with situations in a better way. Muted now, aren't I? There's a question here. Yes. Um, how do I, um, he says, I, I suffer from multiple sclerosis and epilepsy. And sometimes I find it very hard to keep calm um, much of the time. Is there something you could suggest to help? Yeah, that is, that's very, very difficult. Uh, I can, I can totally understand that because, you know, uh, it's a, it's a disease uh, which is, uh, which I have seen people suffering and it's so, so negative, so, you know, so, so problematic, so bad. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, that I think the situation that the thing is that uh, we, you have to try to do whatever you can to make things slightly better, even if for a short period or, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, but then, you know, uh, you have to understand that uh, feeling uh, too, too, what can you say, too negative, too, too bad about that is not going to help us. Actually, it's going to uh, make us more unhappy and more uh, suffer more. Uh, so therefore, uh, realizing this, then uh, even if uh, for a short period of time, if I can a little bit relax and feel uh, okay a little bit, you know, from within myself, uh, within that, you know, suffering and pain, uh, then I think it will be useful and helpful. Uh, so therefore, you know, sometimes if you can distract yourself a little bit, you know, uh, like uh, uh, whatever practice, you know, listening to some uh, music or teaching or, you know, uh, doing something that, you know, uh, you enjoy, you know, uh, or, you know, a little bit maybe some just breathing out and breathing in and just not not focusing on the pain and problem at that time, but just letting mind in the, you know, uh, in something else. Mm -hmm. uh, could also a little bit take it off your mind. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is uh, maybe not so much, but, you know, uh, I think effort that we can try. Um, this has to be the last question um, for today, but I, there are other questions here, but they'll have to wait till next time. And I'm sure there'll be plenty of time in the future to get all the questions answered. But this is quite an interesting one, and I think it's, wor it's a worth answering out of the, the many. How about the ability to have genuine compassion for, for others, but not for oneself? Because I wish for happiness, but my mind is full of ingrained negative talk going on in my head, and I struggle to be kind to myself. Actually, you know, uh, the compassion for others, I think, is coming from compassion for yourself. Because if you don't, you know, compassion for yourself means what you want. You don't want pain, you don't want suffering, you don't want negative things. And therefore you know that others don't want it. And therefore you want to have others positive things, you know. Most of the time, I think, when people think that they are, they don't, they don't um, have compassion to themselves, uh, I think it is more like, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
I think I think they actually want happiness for themselves. And uh, but you know, uh, do not think that they are good enough. You know, they kind of they should be better. They should be much better and much uh, you know nicer and stronger. I think they have mostly too much expectation from themselves. I think then you know this kind of thing happens that you know uh, but I think what we have to do is that you know uh, uh, you know we are you know we have lots of positive side we have lots of negative side uh, even if it is you know uh, no compassion for yourself uh, you know that is possible that is you know uh, due to some reason or another, uh, but uh, you know, uh, it is something that you know you have to slowly. It's okay, you know. I think you have to be okay with that, uh, and then you know slowly work on it. That what is it that I? Uh, why is it that I don't want good things for myself? Of course. You will find actually that you want things good, for, good things for yourself. Uh, you don't want bad things for yourself. Mm. So therefore, it's just you know certain, certain way of thinking or certain uh, something that uh, you know. I think you just have to look again and again more deeply, and then I think you will find that you know uh, there's no reason why you should not have positive things and uh, you know good things and, and that's you know uh, that's what then you try to work on but if you are really uh, you know thinking about others and uh, helping them and you know wishing them well uh, slowly I think uh, you will change also I think uh, you don't have to too much worry because uh, Sometimes people, you know, think that I don't care about myself too much or enough uh, is also, I think, uh, you know, what we think I don't have compassion to myself or enough compassion to myself, you know, how much should it be? You know, I make it every one of us have you know say this is this much is is enough and this much is not enough or this is good enough and this is not good enough and that judgment is made about yourself so therefore you know maybe you are making a judgment that you know your uh, compassion to your as yourself should be like this and then it's not like this but it's like this it's okay Thank you. Well, that, that brings us to the to the end of today. But it's interesting that most of the questions have been about dealing with personal negativity, it seems. And I'm sure during the course of the these lectures, we'll be dealing with ways of dealing with that, you know, very directly. But our talk next uh, next week is is confession, is the title of the talk next week. So thank you very, very much indeed. And thank you, audience, for attending. And uh, given there's a lot to think about and to work on and to really develop that bodhicitta, that drive, that powerful drive. Thank you very, very much indeed. Thank you so much. Thank you. All the best wishes and see you next time. Thank you so much. <laughs>